Jacobs from MyDUIAttorney.org. I'm here today with Francisco Rodriguez. He's the owner and founder of Hollywood Bail Bond, a bail bond service in the Los Angeles, California area. And Francisco has been in the bail bond industry for over 13 years. Welcome, Francisco. How are you doing? I'm well. Uh, thanks for asking. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for taking the time. I, I appreciate it very much. I usually uh, talk to attorneys, so I can talk to someone else bail bonds with so. Um, Good. It'll give you a little. Yeah. Give you a different twist on things. Definitely, yeah. yeah. My first question is uh, an easy one, but maybe not to most people. Um, what is a bail bond? Uh, Richard, a bail bond is a is a guarantee made to the court that the defendant will make all appearances associated with a case prior to a court ruling. Um, Generally, there's a, a predetermined dollar amount that's been set by the court. A bail bond is not a fee that, if paid, frees a defendant from his obligation to appear. It is, however, a guarantee that he will appear. Therefore, if someone is out on bail and fails to go to court, that person could have picked up an additional case, the first based on the original arrest and the second for failing to appear. Okay, so a bail bond essentially is you're being asked to put money up as a defendant to make sure you show up for court. And if you don't, not only prior do you forfeit the bond, but um, you'll get picked up for a second charge, which is failing to appear. Is that right? That that can be the case, yes. Oh, you can be. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was right. So what uh, prompted you to get into the bail bonds business? Well, there was a, uh, a general need out here, and like any other small business, uh, uh, to make a business succeed and grow, you want to fulfill a need that exists. Um, at the time that we came along, I had friends who were in the bail bond industry that were distressed by the state of things uh, as the uh, industry existed at that time. Um, with that in mind, we started Hollywood Bail Bonds. There were numbers of people that were being arrested, as there still are at any given time in Los Angeles County. you got 20,000 people in jail. So there was a need. We were attempting to uh, fulfill the needs brought on by all those arrests. You, you said at any one time there's 20,000 people that have, what, just been arrested? Well, that are in custody in L.A. County. That doesn't mean you were arrested okay. last night. It could mean you were arrested uh, two or three weeks ago and you were incapable of making bail. So there you are. Okay. That's quite a lot of people. Right? Yes. All right, so getting back to the, the bail bond itself, maybe the best way is, you know, let me right, so let me create a scenario and then maybe you can walk me through it. So let's say uh, a man's been arrested and he's charged with possession of a uh, controlled substance like cocaine. And so he, he finds out, he tells his family, the jailer says the bail bond is uh, $10,000. So what happens from there? Um, the arrestee and the family have a couple of options. Um, and the bail for possession of a minor amount of a controlled substance such as cooking is indeed $10,000. Uh, they could wait it out and try their luck in front of a judge, uh, the objective being to try to convince the court to lower the bail amount or lim eliminate the need for bail altogether. The police have uh, 72 hours, uh, holidays and weekends are not included, to get an arrestee in front of a judge. So you might have to wait a few days to pursue that option. In fact, the worst possible day of the year to get arrested would probably be like the night before Thanksgiving because the courts yeah. are going to be closed Thursday and Friday, then you've got the weekend, then your 72-hour clock starts. And now that's one option, to wait it out and try and give a judge a best shot. Additionally, so they could... Let me ask, um, let me ask, probably the worst time to get arrested would always be, I guess, uh, what, Friday evening, right? You had to wait out the weekend? Uh, yeah, other than special circumstances like the one I just gave, which was Wednesday night prior to Thanksgiving, because uh, Thanksgiving, which is Thursday, and the following Friday are both court holidays in California. So wow. now, instead of the weekend, now you've got four days before that 72-hour clock starts. So in essence, you could end up 
sitting in the uh, in the jail for a week before you got yourself in front of a judge to try to plead your case as to why you shouldn't have to pay bail. Okay, okay. Sorry to jump ahead. So that's a, that's one option. Now, you know, hang tough and see how you fare in front of the jail. The downside of that, by the way, is if the judge doesn't eliminate it or reduce it and you don't make bail right there in the court, then you go into county jail. And they are so busy down there, you can expect to be stuck at least another day just for them to be aware that they've got you, update their records and know they've got your body, and then we can go in and post a bond. Wow. Now, an additional option from the get-go is... Uh, if you have the uh, the ability to deposit the full ten thousand dollars cash with the jailer to secure a release, the advantage of that option is you get your full ten thousand dollars back. The downside is many people cannot lay their hands on ten thousand cash promptly, and if they can, they may choose not to hand it over to the police. And you can put me on that list. Thirdly, in the option most use is they call a bail bondsman, Hollywood bail bonds, for example. A bail bondsman is going to charge a percentage of the full bail amount, typically that's 10%, and that 10% is non-refundable. When qualifying someone for a bail bond, the bondsman is going to look for ties to the community, and that generally means getting persons other than the arrestee to co-sign. The co-signer would need to be gainfully employed or a property owner. The days of bail bondsmen accepting televisions or cars as collateral are pretty much gone. Oh, so that's... Uh is that like kind of an urban myth that you can pawn jewelry or cars and things like that? And the bell well, bonds there, will take you them. know, there was a time that that was the scenario, and a bail bond office looked like a pawn shop. Huh. Um, I suspect there's somebody out there who might, but using cars, for example, uh, most people think, or many people think, you can go in and give a bail bondsman your pink slip and uh, secure a release. But the reality in California is if you give me a, a pink slip Wednesday night, in essence, handing me the title to your car. Thursday morning, you go down to the DMV and apply for another one. So bail bondsmen oh. eventually wised up to that trick. And uh, generally, and, and in fact, the current scenario is actually better for the consumer, which is just get your friends or coworkers or relatives to co-sign, and then you're not parking with your car, you're not parking with your jewelry. Um, the people that love you and trust you, I guarantee you. Are guaranteed okay. that you know, and in fact, one of the phrases we use is, "If they don't trust you, we don't trust you." Oh, that's true. Yeah. If no one will speak for you. I could ask the bell bottom to speak for you. Right. Okay. So, of the people that you help, is there any uh, commonality? Do you deal with more men or women, or younger people or older? Well, males lead the pack by a country mile. Um, of those that we've bonded out, and we've bonded thousands of people out of jail, um, males are probably 95% to 5% female. Um, wow. The males are almost always under 35. We, maybe 75, 80% are going to be uh, young males. And, uh, you know, I mean, it just goes with the territory, yeah. A young male is out there drinking and driving recklessly or partying or, you know, with testosterone raging, getting into a bar fight and and things of that nature. So um, primarily males, primarily young males, uh, we pretty much pull people out uh, reflective of the, uh, you know, the population of the city you're in. So in Los Angeles, we've got a large uh, Hispanic population, and as such, a large number of the bonds that we do are people with Spanish surnames. Okay. I guess just out of curiosity, like what's the biggest bond you guys have ever done? Um, the biggest bond we did was maybe two years ago. Um, this was a very wealthy person, and his bail had been set at $11 million. <laughs> Wow, it's crazy. He owned a $25 million piece of property, and he had a large inheritance. For him, it was no big deal. Huh. Well, that's true. Wow, okay. So, um, you know, when someone gets arrested, who is it that's calling you? Is it the person or their family, and 
And where are they calling from? Like the jail or their home? Or? If it's the arrestee that's calling us, well, then obviously they're calling from the jail. Uh, that sometimes occurs when you're in a jail. If you get a nice jailer, he may hand you a phone book, uh, and then you can try your luck at going through the phone book and finding um, the bail bondsman. Um, more often than not, it's a friend or family member because when you get arrested, the first thing you do is call your parents, call your friends, and ask them to help you get out. A lot right. of times people don't want their parents to know they got arrested, so we're dealing with friends and or the relatives. Okay. Huh. Well, you talked about this briefly, but I guess we can get that a laundry list. You know, what's, so what's needed to qualify for a bail bond and... You know, what's all the ways you can think of that people can post collateral for a bond? Well, what's needed for a bail bondsman is we're looking for ties to the community. So if you call me up, and depending on the size of the bond, let's say we're talking about the scenario created where the bail was $10,000, well, then you give me one gainfully employed person, and by gainfully employed, I mean somebody that works at the post office, not somebody that's flipping burgers somewhere. Um, because I want a job they're not going to jump up and run away from if they're on the hook for 10 Gs, as I will be. Um, so to qualify for the bond, you need the, you know, the, the backup. As the bonds get bigger, you need more backup. If you're talking about $50,000, then we're talking about uh, more than one cosigner. And if you start talking 100000 and up, then we'll wow. start looking at real estate and or other cash collateral. Again, using that big bond I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, that one was secured with real estate. Oh, okay. And so getting out of jail in general, and this covers some of what you do and some of not maybe, but so w what are all the ways that you can, uh, you can get out of jail, I guess including being bonded out? Well, in California... There are five legal ways to get out of jail. <laughs> um, the first, the most common that many of us have experienced is simply a citation. As in, you're driving down the freeway, highway patrol pulls you over, gives you a ticket. You sign it, it gives you a, uh, an approximate period in which to return, and you do. And if you don't do that, by the way, then you will get a warrant for your arrest, and you've just upped the game from the simple ticket to whatever the bail will be associated with that failure to appear. Uh, secondly, if you get lucky, you get released on your own recognizance. And that means that that, uh, that very same highway patrolman, whatever you did, didn't merit a ticket. He arrests you. He takes you down to the uh, local police station, surrenders you there, and then you get lucky again, and their situation might be that they are so crowded that they would like less bodies, and the offense you did is not so horrible. Uh, for instance, your first driving under the influence, first time you get arrested for drunk driving, and if nobody got hurt, well, then they're probably going to release you on your own recognizance, which means yeah. they'll give you a date and time to show up in court. Now, third and fourth ways to get out are a couple we alluded to already, which is a cash bond and a uh, surety bond. So you can go into the court or give the jailer the full cash amount um, and you'll be released and if you don't show they're going to keep your cash and they're going to come looking for you or a surety bond where you hire somebody like Hollywood Bail Bonds and uh, we make a guarantee to the court the advantage of the surety bonds is it's less money out of your pocket and we'll do things like uh, remind you of uh, when your court date is, and we're a lot more compassionate. So if I get a letter from the court telling me that uh, you missed court, I'm not going to run over there and try to surrender you. I'm going to call you up and say what happened. More times than not, it's a uh, court flub than it is the, uh, you know, the person that failed to go to court. For instance, they may have given them the wrong date, the wrong time, the wrong courtroom, uh, et cetera, okay. et cetera. 